protein synthesis is just a fancy way of saying making proteins. And just like if you want to make a certain meal, you need the instructions in order to do it. A recipe book gives the instructions to make, for example, a cake. You read those instructions and you're able to make a cake. In exactly the same way, genes give the information to make proteins. This little strand of DNA which makes up a gene gives the information to string together a bunch of amino acids. And a bunch of amino acids strung together is essentially what makes a protein. DNA has this kind of appearance. It's made up of four chunks, and those are A, C, G, and T, and only those four. And they're all paired together. Here you can see a base pair of A and T. Below that is a C and a G. Below that is a G and a C. And it's always structured together like this. A will always be with T and T will always be with A. C will always be with G and G will always be with C. And A would never pair with G, for example. Next thing to notice is that these are grouped in three. This is how they code for the amino acids. It's every chunk of three bits of DNA that has the information for which amino acid belongs next in the protein chain. Now, when it comes time to give the information to create a protein, the DNA can't really go anywhere and it can't go anywhere to be read because it needs to be protected and it remains within the nucleus. So here's what happens. First of all, part of that string will kind of move away. It unzips just for a little while and leaves part of itself exposed. And then this next piece, which is kind of like DNA, comes and matches itself up. The A joins with the T, the C joins with the G, and this continues onwards. Now this is not actually DNA. This is called RNA. And this particular type is mRNA, which means messenger RNA. Messenger RNA basically takes the message of what information is contained in the DNA inside of the nucleus. Notice that with RNA molecules, there is no base T. T is just replaced with U, but it's basically doing the same job. Now what happens is, the mRNA molecule is going to leave the nucleus and it's going to go to a ribosome. And ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis. And next, we need another important RNA molecule. This one is tRNA. Now tRNA has three bases attached to it and an amino acid at the top. And the specific amino acid that's attached depends on which three bases there are at the bottom. Remember that we've got lots and lots of different types of amino acids, and it's the specific structure and order of those amino acids in a chain that determines which type of protein is being produced. What happens is, this tRNA molecule comes and aligns at the correct place, and this determines where that amino acid is going to appear in the chain. This will happen again at the next place, and this determines the next amino acid that there will be in the chain, and they get bonded together. This will continue on and on and on and on, bearing in mind that DNA and RNA molecules are much, much, much longer than they are shown here. And ultimately, what we end up with is a string of thousands of amino acids, and thousands of amino acids together make up a protein. Mm -hmm.